Hi, this is Karen Greenhouse, and today I'm going to show you how to find the area between curves on the Casio and the TI graphing calculators. I'm using the Casio Prism because I like the color, but you could use any of the Casio graphing calculators. And I'm using the 84 plus color edition again because the color makes it look nice. Um, but you could again use it on the regular 83 or 84. So in the Casio, here's our main menu. We want to go to the graph menu, so we're going to choose five. This takes us to where we can enter our two functions. Notice they're color coded. So first one will be blue, next one will be red. So let's enter our two functions. So we're going to just use some simple functions to work with here. So x squared plus x plus 1. My first function to set it on the Casio, I hit execute down here at the bottom. And now that function is blue. It's going to be blue when I get to my graph. Second function, let's do a negative x squared plus 2 and again execute to set it that's my red function let's do the same thing on the ti84 so over here the um, graph menu is or my y equals i hit the y equal button brings me to the y equals menu notice the colors are in these little blue rectangles here along the side first one's blue second one's red so let's enter the same functions and you'll notice it's really the same exact buttons. They're just in slightly different locations on the calculator. So x squared plus x plus 1. And I hit Enter to set it. Notice the function itself doesn't change color. So the indication of what color it is is over here on the left. So enter the second function. So we were going to do a negative x squared plus 2 and enter to set. So now I have the same thing on both calculators. I want to see the graphs. So on the Casio, that's the draw, which is F6, right under draw. And I will see my graph show up. And on TI, that's the graph button, sort of in the same location. And I hit graph, and I will see my graph show up. So notice first function is blue, second function is red on both calculators. Casio does include its numbers on its uh, um, display of the axes, but it's basically the same. Let's now work on what we're trying to find, which is the area between these two functions. So the integral between these two functions. So what I basically need is the area under the red curve and the area under the blue curve and then the difference of those. So how do I do that on the Casio? So I want to get into the solve menu and let's just look at our graphs here. So I've got my blue function. If I toggle up, I've got my red function and I want the area between these. So I don't I want to go into my solve menu, so I'm going to hit F5. I don't see the integral here, so I'm going to choose F6 because this arrow means see more. And there's the integral of what I'm looking for, so F3. And I'm actually not just looking for the integral under this red curve or the blue. I'm looking for the intersection of these two. So I actually can choose that on the Casio, so F3, so the intersection of those. And once I do that, since it knows it's looking for the intersection of two, or maybe three, but in this case two, I can actually see it pop up right away. So here's the first intersection or the lower bound in this case. Since that's what I want, I'm going to hit execute to set it. Notice the line turns solid. And now I want to get this second one. I can quickly get there by choosing my arrow. Toggles me right on over. And again, my upper bound is 0.5. So when I hit execute, I immediately see what I'm looking for, which is the area between these two curves. Here's the lower bound, here's the upper bound, and here is the an, it, here's the integral, here's the area. So I get my answer right away. So let's go do the same thing on the TA84. It's a little bit more complex. Let's pretend we don't know what the lower and upper bounds are. We're on the TI-84. We don't actually see those. We can see where they might be on the graph, but we don't know what those numbers are. First thing on the TI-84 is I have to know what those two uh, lower and upper bound um, values are for x. So we're going to go to second trace, which brings me to my calculate menu. And I need to first find the intersections, assuming I don't know them. So how do I do that? Well, you'll notice that I'm on the blue line, and its first question is, is this the curve you're talking about? So I'm going to say enter yes, and now it goes to the red. Yes, that's my second curve. It does ask me for a guess, so basically which of these two intersections am I looking at? So let's just kind of arrow over to that left bound. So as long as we're kind of close, and then we hit enter. So my first 
boundary or my first intersection is negative 1, 1. So I'm going to write down that negative 1 as my um, lower bound for my integral. And then I'm going to have to repeat the process. Second, trace. And I, again, want the other intersection, so 5. And this time, again, it's asking me, do you want the blue curve? Yes. The red curve, yes, but now I want this second intersection, so I am going to have to arrow just a little bit closer to it before I hit enter again. There's my guess. That has to be right on it. So enter, and now I have my other boundary for my intersection, which is positive 0.5. So again, I want to write those down because I'm going to need those. Now I'm ready to find the intersection, but I can't just go right to it. I have to basically go through the process of finding the area under the curve for the red and the area under the curve for the blue and doing a subtraction, a difference, to get the area that I'm actually interested in. So we're going to go back to second calc. And now here's my integral. So I'm going to choose 7 this time. And it's going to ask me for my lower limit. I could arrow over to it, but since we already found them, I'm just going to enter it. So I know that the lower limit was a negative 1. So notice it allows me just to pop it in. So then I'm going to hit enter and you'll see it's dealing with the blue curve right now. So we're looking for the area under the curve for the blue with a lower bound of negative one. And now I want to tell it what's the upper bound. So I'm going to enter that upper bound, which we already found as 0.5. So I'm going to hit enter. And so I see the area under the blue curve right there, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for this spot here. So now I need to find the area of the red so I need to write down this number, this integral here, 1.5. So let's write that down somewhere. And now let's go back to second calc. And I want to find the other integral of the red. So this time, notice it's still blue. So I'm working with the wrong, um, I need the other graph. So I need to arrow up to change it to the red. So now the calculator knows I'm working with the red function. So I want to tell it again its lower limit, which is going to be the same one. So I can enter that because I remember I wrote that down. So negative 1. So now you'll see it's a red indicator. So there's my lower bound. Upper bound was 0.5, same one. And when I hit enter, I see now the area under the red curve for that same interval. Notice I can't see the blue one anymore. So let's write that down, 2.625. I'm not looking for that whole area. I'm looking for basically the difference between the red and the blue areas under the curve. So now I have to actually kind of step out of the graph and go into my calculation mode. So second, quit. And let's do a quick calculation. So the area under the red curve was 2.625. I wrote that down. And I need to subtract the area under the blue curve for that same interval. And then when I hit enter, this is then the difference or the area between the two curves, which you'll notice matches what I had on the cal Casio calculator here. So it's a much longer process to get there on the TI-84. And unfortunately, too, if we go back to graph, I can't actually see what I'm looking at. I, I want just this little piece here, but for the TI-85, I can't. I mean, I'm sorry, 84, I can't actually see what I'm looking at. And I don't see my upper and lower bounds on my grid. I have to make sure I'm writing things down. So the Casio is a much easier process and much quicker as well.